if you're watching this wondering who on earth I am, I'm Adam. I work as a product evangelist on behalf of Microsoft. And over the last year, I've had the privilege of looking at some of the best premium Windows 10 devices that are out there right now. Quite a few of them have been Samsung. Samsung, of course, are most well known for their phones. They are some of the best smartphone devices you can get today. But Samsung have also been making a play into the computing space for some time. Now, I've been privileged enough to be invited down to their lovely looking studio here uh, to check out their latest range of Windows 10 devices. And a big part of that is to answer one question. Why can't laptops be more like smartphones? Well, th they can, actually. Sorry if I baited you in there with, with um, kind of answered that question already. They can. Uh, what we can do is uh, show you some great examples. So, with that said, this is the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro and the Galaxy Book Pro 360. Samsung have just announced a new range of Windows 10 devices. As such, this will be an impressions slash overview sort of video as they are so new that I've only had the chance to look at them the morning of this recording. In any case, we are going to break down everything we know about this device, how it works with Windows 10, and anything else we think you need to know. Now, the Galaxy Book Pro and Galaxy Book Pro 360 are the latest in Samsung's premium line of computing devices. The big change is actually just their overall approach to computing. They now have a distinct range of Galaxy Books running Windows 10 from premium to entry. So you have a lot more choice when it comes to a Samsung-made Windows 10 device. Today, we are focusing on the premium, and you are going to have two sizes of both devices, either a 13.3 inch or a 15.6 inch. A quick note early that the 13.3 inch versions have support for LTE, even 5G if you're using the 361, uh, but we will get to that a little bit later. Right now, I want to look at the build of these devices. Now, these are premium. Uh, you will expect a premium finish, and that is certainly the case here. There are three colors available. We have Mystic Navy, Mystic Silver, and Mystic Bronze. A lot of Mystic there. To clarify, these devices are not sidekicks. They just look very nice. The outside is made of aluminum, and inside is made from magnesium. But what does that mean? Well, this makes both devices very light, some of the lightest in their class. Uh, if we talk just about the Pro model for the moment, uh, the 15.6 inch version weighs 1.05 kilograms and the 13.3 inch version weighs just 0.87 kilograms. That is your hold up a bag of sugar comparison moment there. They are ridiculously light. Uh, the 360 version weighs in ever so slightly more with the 15.6 inch weighing 1.39 kilograms and the 13.3 inch weighing either 1.04 kilograms or 1.1 kilograms depending on if you have the 5G version or not. As well as being light though, they are also thin, thinner than my finger, which before you ask, no, I do not have fat fingers. At least I don't think so. Do I? Anyway, uh, there is not much between the Galaxy Book Pro and the Pro 360. You are looking at 11.7 millimeters and 11.9 millimeters of thickness, respectively, for the 15.6 inch version. Then you've got 11.2 millimeters and 11.5 millimeters of thickness, respectively, for the 13.3 inch version. Whew, that's a lot of numbers, a lot of metrics I just spat out there. The point is, all of those numbers add up to what is a very easy device to carry around. If we bring it back to that line of why Windows 10 devices can't be more like phones. Well, if a phone is pocketable, a Windows 10 device needs to be portable. And these two hit that pretty damn well, whether it needs to be thrown in your bag, kept under your arm, fit on a coffee table, you're set. So let's get to the rest of the outside. Both models feature rubber feet and your bottom firing speakers. And then of course we have the ports. It's the same for both models. On one side we have a headphone jack, USB-C and expandable storage, plus a SIM card tray if you have the 5G or LTE version of the 13 inch. Then on the other side we have another two USB-C ports, one of which supports Thunderbolt 4, giving you ultra fast transfer speeds. 
The Galaxy Book Pro features a full HD AMOLED display with the Galaxy Book Pro 360 getting a super AMOLED display as it features both full touch and S Pen support. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff to cover off of these displays. Firstly, it has what's known as an eye care display. So it emits 6.5% less blue light than your typical LCD display. Now you may have seen a lot of talk about blue light, which is on the UV spectrum and can potentially have an effect on you if you're in front of the screen all day, say, working from home or in an office as your eyes take in a lot from the screen. It's why you see things like uh, blue light filter glasses and there is even a night light in Windows 10 that you can switch on which filters it out heavily. But having that kind of thought put into the display right from the get-go is something that I very much appreciate. Elsewhere, it has a super low response time of just 0.2 milliseconds. And for the color buffs out there, it has 120% color volume in the DCI P3 color space, a contrast ratio of 1 million to 1? Is M million? Probably. It's certified for HDR500 and has an intelligent color engine, so it automatically switches between four color modes depending what you are using. <sighs> You'd think after looking at Windows 10 devices over the years and talking about their color, I'd begin to understand what it all means, but... To be fair though, if you are like me and don't have a clue uh, what all that color stuff means, that intelligent color engine is actually really handy. So if you're using Photoshop, for instance, it will switch to Adobe RGB. If you're watching a movie, it will switch to DCI-P3. If you've got the knowledge for that stuff, you can also switch it manually, but it's cool if you don't really understand all of that as it just does it for you and picks what looks best. And I like when I have to do less things. The webcam is a 720p HD uh, camera, which has a studio mode to uh, make you look nicer on your video calls. There is also a dual microarray built in uh, with noise cancellation as well. So it will cut out things like typing on the keyboard or maybe your dog's barking, anything else that might happen at home. As for the keyboard, this is similar to previous generations of Samsung computing devices. We have a nice spaced out keyboard with the 15 inch featuring a number pad as well. Some of the cool things in the function keys, we have the ability to switch between performance modes. So you can find that in F11. You've got high performance, no fan, silent, and optimized as well. You've also got one which is a shortcut to second screen. Not just any second screen either. So if you've got one of the latest Galaxy tabs, you can use said Galaxy tab as a second screen to your Galaxy Book Pro. It will share your screen wirelessly, allowing you to either mirror said screen or use it as an extension to your main display. Very cool. Now it's that point in the video where we go nerdy on spec. So let's do this. Both devices feature 11th generation Intel processors, either i5 or i7 in the UK with Intel Iris Xe graphics up to 16 gigabyte of RAM with a 32 gig option on the 15.6 inch and one terabyte of storage. All of that, along with some of the other aspects we've mentioned, makes both of these devices Intel Evo certified. If you don't know what that is, Intel Evo is a certification that lets you know that these devices have the very latest stuff for a great experience, including those 11th gen processors, but also Intel Wi-Fi 6, Thunderbolt 4 support, a thin bezel screen, fast wake up, high battery life. In fact, let's talk about that battery life uh, for a moment. So these come with the claim of up to 21 hours battery for the 13.3 inch or 20 hours for the 15.6 inch. That is mental. Now again, these are still very new, so I've not been able to really test that out. Plus those numbers are based on video playback time, so your mileage will vary depending on how strenuous the task is. But in any case, that is mightily impressive and should last you the whole day from when you turn the laptop in the morning to when you close the lid in the evening. Plus, when you need to charge it, the Galaxy Book Pro and Pro 360 come with a 65 watt compact charger that looks like the one you get with, you guessed it, your phone. There's no power brick, it's tiny, um, especially when you compare it to general laptop chargers that you're probably used to. So that's your spec, that's your general information, but how do these devices actually feel to use? So I got to spend a couple hours with all of Samsung's new range from the premium to the entry. But if we focus on these two Pro models, what really struck me here was how much they've evolved from their predecessors. The Galaxy Book Pro 360 feels a lot like a hybrid of last year's Book S and Book Flex. It's kept that incredibly thin body, uh, but now it's got that 360 freedom you get that the Flex had. The best part of both is without a doubt though, the, the screen, it's just so, so vibrant. Even just looking at the desktop itself and doing nothing else, it's enough to wow you. One thing we haven't talked about a lot yet is 
the S Pen. This is a new S Pen. Gone is the pop-out stylus, and you now have, with the Pro 360, a more physical pen. Now, I quickly used it with Samsung's Air Command, which is a pop-up which you can launch within Windows 10 and did a little screen writing. And even just from this, you can see that there are varying points of pressure. It recognizes how much you're tilting the pen, and it feels very natural as well with a softer tip, so it doesn't feel like you're just mashing the screen every time that you tap it. Now, with both devices being Intel Evo certified, they both run great. Multitasking is an absolute breeze. You've got the potential to use creative applications and a little bit of gaming as well. Those are the sort of things we couldn't really try today because of the limited time I've had with them. But in any case, the time I have had, you'll get the kind of performance that you will expect from a premium Samsung device. So, all good there. If I was to summarize my impressions of these two devices, I'd probably say this. I've had the privilege of using Samsung's previous Windows 10 range over the last year, the Book Flex, the Book Ion, the Book S, but they were all very much individual devices with their own thing. Samsung have taken the best of what they had there and they've applied it to a full range. These two are at the top of that range. They are thin, light, they've got beautiful displays, they perform how you want them to, how you expect them to. We haven't even mentioned the fact that the 13-inch version of the 360 supports 5G as well, so you can pop a SIM card in there um, for when you are on the move, be that on the train or wherever. These are competing to be the best premium Windows 10 offering you can get today. Now, I can't tell you if that's the case. I need to try and stay impartial here. But frankly, depending on who you ask, they may well be. But that is that for now. Thanks for watching. That was a first impressions overview type look at the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro and the Pro 360. Hope you enjoyed it. See you around.